That was the only song that year that something happened. <laughs> Am I correct? You are. See? You're right, you're right in the ballpark. Well, I'm getting ready for the Flakes tri- <laughs> trivia stuff, so I'm figuring out how to answer these. Uh, I, I, I know it's something. Uh-huh. The Breakfast Flakes podcast brought to you by the Blue Cat Bar and Grill. Next to the Roadside Event Center in Hudley. The Blue Cat. It's where it's at. 525, Mark and Paul checking in, October 29th. Folks, I had to come to Jesus with Mark yesterday. I'm going to try and turn it down a little bit with the music stuff. We had uh, two of the crew stop by from the USS Billings. I didn't play in the Navy. I could have. Uh, Today is the anniversary of uh, the original Black Friday, which started the Great Depression. Yep. There was a singer in the 80s named Razzie Bailey who had a song called The Great Depression. I didn't play that this morning. I played America because we like that one. And I played Seven Spanish Angels because it's a great song. And actually, that entire album of Ray Charles called Friendship, which was just duets with country stars, was a great album. And I went and saw Ray Charles. He played Alberta Bear Theater in 1988. And I went to the concert by myself. At the time, folks, I didn't have let's go to concert money. (laughs) But I went... And it's in my top ten. It's just one of the best shows. He was so freaking amazing. And that whole Friendship album, and the way radio does, you know, they quit playing some of the songs. Two Old Cats Like Us was a single that played for a while. Uh, Rock and Roll Shoes with B.J. Thomas, that played for a bit. But uh, Seven Spanish Angels is the one that has lasted. And the reason Mark went to the concert by himself? (laughs) No, no, it's not. It's because of the line in the America song that you just heard. I ain't ready for the altar, but I do agree there's times when a woman can be a friend of mine. I couldn't get him to talk to me then either, so. so yeah, the stock market crashed October 29th, 1929, mm-hmm. the day that Bill Brinkle was born. I always, Which you'll always remember. I always will remember that because I always said that he was born and the, everything in the country collapsed. But uh, that was a big one. Probably heading there someday again, although we have security measures and things in place to protect us a little better. But you never know. With a uh, $35 trillion of debt and piling up by the day, it could happen. Could happen. Well, that's why, as I'm making my notes over stuff that uh, is going on in the news, the biggest news item, the one that's going to be important, the reason that some of you husbands are going to be up early Friday, is the Montana Mo- Millionaire tickets go on sale at 5.30 on Friday. Yep. Time pump, going to have a line. And they're doing they're doing more of them this year, aren't they? Yeah. I four. think they're doing more drawings. Yep. Uh, 125,000 tickets. Four people will take home a million bucks. Smaller prizes are available too. One person will take home 250. Uh, that drawing for which is uh, December 2nd, and other prizes of 500 and 100 will be awarded. Are they still 20 bucks? Uh, it doesn't say, Paul. Oh, yeah. I would imagine it is. Because I'm out of the Mega Millions now. Too much money? Too much. I ain't paying that for that. Five dollars a ticket. The hell you think we're made of money? <laughs> said said the farmer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 500,000 tickets available, $20 each. $20, yeah. So there's still 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. If you got a good thing, don't mess with it. Exactly right. Don't mess with it. Tickets aren't 20, 20 bucks in advance and then 25 the day of. <laughs> that's right. The fair board should take note of that. They found something good and they're keeping it that way. I had to laugh a little bit yesterday at our remote towards the end, about the last 45 minutes. Uh, not surprisingly, because this is what people do. It's the 10th remote. It's the last 45 minutes of the 10th remote. Uh, I told Paul we got a message from a friend of ours at 1257 that said, I'm going to be there in five minutes. Oh. Paul, Paul, did he get signed up? Uh, no, he did no, not. No, he did not. Because you know what time we stop. That's right. At one. That's right. I told you that. Yep. But we're sitting there and uh, we got this kid we hired that uh, is just kind of getting his eyes open to what radio is all about and he he runs the computer and he makes sure that the brakes get on the air and the last 45 minutes we were just talking to people and he kept giving me the signal like well we got to do one more I'm like well i'll be with you in a minute and he was getting perturbed i thought it was kind of funny i said well if you stay in radio broadcast some, somewhere down the road this is what you want you want people that want to stop by and talk to you and if we miss a break or two oh well <laughs> we're still giving it away on saturday that's right which is a better shot at winning something great than the montana million 
Millionaire. It is the last uh, the last great prize in local radio, not just in the state of Montana, but maybe in the country. Because if you show up at the party, you got a shot, and the odds are great. We got to uh, we have to ship that music over to our guy. I already told him this. This yep. okay, good. Yep. Yeah, that way we can use it behind the while we're picking names. And yeah, it's a great uh, chance. In fact, uh, since uh, yesterday, we still have a few cards left that we can uh, fill out for folks this week. So you'll have a chance a couple more times this week on air to get in. So listen for that because it is limited. There's not many left. Right. And uh, we're going to limit that to 600 people. And um, gives you a pretty good shot. If half of them show up for the party, you got a 1 in 300 shot. And out of that, we draw probably 70 people, give them a chance to get a lanyard. Yeah. That's pretty good odds. Yes, it is. I mean, you're looking at like about a 25% chance of getting picked to come up there on the stage and be one of the finalists. Mm. Just don't make me do stuff. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'd do it if I, I had a chance for that. Yeah. I'd do it. And it's a party. That's what you do at parties. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to a party where you did some, something at the end of the night you didn't think you were going to do at the start of the night? We all have. Mm-hmm. I've been to a lot of parties where I thought I was going to do something at the end of the night and then it didn't happen. I've been to more of those. Too. Yeah, me too, Wilson. So, <laughs> Hey, you know who's going to be here tonight? That's right. A, a gal that doesn't like you. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Say when. Well, eight thirty work for you. <laughs> I gotta quit giving. I gotta quit giving you my killer closing That's all right. lines. I'm gonna use those lines. <laughs> Hmm. Should be a good time, though. I got to uh, start putting some stuff together for my games this week. And Mark gets his at the store, so his is pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, and in great demand is the Skittles game, so I got to do that one. Hmm. <laughs> Deanna tells me 83 days. 83. That's not long, folks. Not long at all. No. Nope. It's about 11 weeks. Think how fast that goes. Mm-hmm. You want to know how fast it goes? It goes this fast. You go to the dentist and they reschedule your next appointment to get those teeth drilled in 11 weeks and it just seems like it's there all of a sudden so it's a good one it's a good one it's a good one sitting here every day we got a routine we kind of go through get some news i make notes of some talking points stuff like did you get any rain last night rain, it rained a little bit yeah. out at the ranch not much but i saw a billings that looked like <laughs> for a while there on the radar last night there was uh, there was some heavy rain. Looked like even reddish and yellow somewhere around here. So yeah, I don't have the uh, I don't have the rain gauge up, but the low spot in the driveway where I got a quarter inch mm-hmm. where I can tell. So well, Cotty will get that swept out of there for so it doesn't ruin your concrete. Actually, she's coming to get the four wheeler trailer today. So. Oh, good. So no, I'm, done, so I'm doing good. something for All her. All right, good. That's nice. <laughs> anyway, we uh, we do our routine and check a few things. I go into the news sources and uh, try to figure out what they're trying to pull and i go to the billings gazette and uh look around see what's in there today and they have uh they have an ad in there for john tester today that republicans are rejecting tim sheehy i i don't know what poll they're looking at (laughs) but there's an ad in here uh one is from a combat engineer that said veterans can't count on tim sheehy folks if you were in battle who would you rather have by your side this is desperate rhetoric for a guy who's down in the polls with a week to go tim Sheehy, Navy SEAL, or John Tester? God. This is a guy from Butte. Says he's a Republican. You know, if you're a Republican, do you know what John Tester did to your president? I'd like to ask these Republicans. If you're such, if you're a Republican, do you know what John Tester has done to your president and what he's done to America? How do you think he got the name Tehran John? Hmm? How do you think he, he was labeled that for what he sold out America to? You people are obviously being paid or promised something to do these. Sheehy's plan to privatize health care would put my family in danger. Health care is already privatized, you nitwit. Right. What Kamala and the Democrats want to do is they want to take all health care out of the hands of your doctors and put it in the hands of government-run Medicaid Medicare. Mm-hmm. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. By the way, uh, you guys 
Republicans can call any time. I'm a Republican. I cherish our freedoms. That's why I can't vote for Tim Sheehy. Tim Sheehy fought for your freedoms. Who wants to take away your guns? Who wants to limit Facebook and free speech? Who wants to pack the court? You talk about freedoms. I don't know how much they get paid. Here's another guy from Glasgow. John Tester doesn't care about your party. Yes, he does. 95% of the times he's voted for Biden. 95 on all of his stuff. All the frivolous spending that's ruining your town of Glasgow and others because of inflated government spending. Mm -hmm. And you're voting for the guy. Call any time. By the way, I thought this was uh, interesting about your two-faced phony. Isn't bringing anyone to the state of Montana to speak on his behalf because he knows that Montana is a conservative state and he's a liberal senator, hasn't endorsed Kamala Harris. If if he's such a good guy for Rep- if he doesn't care about party, how come he hasn't endorsed Donald Trump yet? I get this in today. I saw it and I took a picture of it to read it to you. You know, John Tester's got all these goofy ass ads running, spending more money than any senator per voter than anywhere in the United States is John Tester. Right. Lobbyist cash. That's what he's getting. Our spooktacular October isn't over yet at the Roadside Event Center and the Blue Cat Bar and Grill in Huntley. Plan to be at the Roadside Event Center Monday, October 28th for Halloween trivia with Dave Austin starting at 630. And mark your calendars for December 7th for the Huntley Christmas Troll and December 23rd for classic Christmas movie trivia. There's always something happening at the Roadside Event Center and the Blue Cat Bar and Grill in Huntley, just nine miles east of the Metro Park exit. This was a letter from the Stillwater County Sheriff's Office. I want to clarify a recent advertisement in the Stillwater County News from last week that may appear to be an endorsement for Senator John Tesser by my office. This ad was misleading. Let me be clear. We don't endorse any candidate. The photograph of a Stillwater County Sheriff patrol vehicle, which incidentally was taken out of service and sold 12 years ago. Oh my God. Was used used without our consent or knowledge. While the statement claiming that the senator recently secured funding for Stillwater County's first responders may be true, other agencies in the county and for our office specifically have not received any special federal funds or grants since 2011. Wow. The taxpayers of Stillwater County fund our sheriff's operations. The Stillwater County Sheriff's Office strives to maintain neutrality in elections because we have to serve our citizens impartially. This means working with whomever the public chooses to elect without swaying an opinion. We regret the confusion of this ad. This is from their sheriff out there. You see what Tester does Mm -hmm. and his people? This guy's a shyster, folks. He has been pulling the wool over people's eyes in Montana, (laughs) pretending to be someone that he is not. Again, 18 years, he's got away with it. His life has been set up forever. He's become a multi-millionaire over and over again because of perks and favors and packs on the back. Folks can call anytime. I keep telling you that Democrats are not friends of agriculture. They are not friends of agriculture now. In their direction, I read more articles this week on capturing carbon, having to buy carbon credits, carbon taxes, all kinds of stuff, pesticide, herbicide, new fertilizer, all these restrictions, cow farts, you name it. The list goes on and on and on. Resources used to produce our food when we could buy it cheaply. I mean, this is a threat to your livelihood and your way of life. Not only that, folks, but everyone else who works providing everything else for agriculture. You don't realize how big it is. Transportation, truck drivers, grocery stores, retail, companies that make cardboard, packaging, cans, everybody associated with its deliveries, agriculture, people in the fuel industry, fertilizer industries, chemical industries, engineering industries, factories and plants around the world, 
tire manufacturers, steel manufacturers, are you folks dumbasses and can't realize how much is involved in that? And yet the war on agriculture continues. And John Tester should know this. And he votes all the time. The Green New Deal, 100 percent supported by John Tester. These things are going to ruin your livelihood and you vote for him. How can you vote for those people? You you can't even believe the amount of industry and employment and money that is all involved in food production and agriculture all around the world. Ships that transport it, that shipyards, shipbuilding yards, you name it, it goes on and on and on. Railroads transporting grain and things and corn across the country keeps all these industries employed Mm -hmm. and their war continues. And where is John Tester? You know, he's a flat top farmer. Supposedly, yes. And votes for all these things that are going to ruin your industry. Look at his voting record, folks. His voting record. You, what does Kamala Harris have to say about agriculture? The American Farm Bureau guy told me yesterday, he stopped in, signed up for the trip, said, Paul, you got to check out the interviews that they did with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. He goes, you'll crap your pants when you see. This woman has no clue about that industry. Nothing. No. Has no idea. Nothing. At all. Six billion dollars a year in our state alone. Packaging, transportation, I mean, the things that are made from the products. Restaurants all across America that depend on on Angus beef and steaks and things. I mean, folks, and, and remember everything involved in agriculture. Fishing, seafood production, all that kind of stuff. Poultry, eggs, all of that. There are just vast, vast industries in, that are all related to it. The clothes on your back, textiles, cotton, your sh- everything. Are you dumb? Do you not get it? And the war by the Democrats on agriculture to ruin that? And folks, they lead the charge and you're going to vote for them. It makes no sense. No sense at all. Don't slap the hand that feeds you. And phone lines are open. Anytime you want to discuss it, argue your your side, feel free to come in, John Tester. Anybody else can come in. And they don't. No. They go on to some chicken-ass show where they just get, well, what's going on? How do you feel? What do you like about Billings? Where do you stop? Makes me vomit, (laughs) folks. I vomit with that kind of uneducated questioning. You think the people at KTVQ and Color 8, their their news reporters and their anchors, you think they know agriculture like I do? No. Not even close. No. They don't even know news like I know. They don't know politics. They don't. They don't. Well, Governor Gene Ford, he got up and walked out of an interview with Q2 this year. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. And those people are invited to come in Mm -hmm. anytime. Well, this is kind of early for them. Well, that's true. You don't even have to get makeup or anything. But they don't, do they? Open invitation. All the time. All the time. This is such an important election and we can't emphasize it enough. And I know you're sick about hearing it and you're like all of us. You'll be glad when it's over. But, folks, it's the most important one of our time. Mm -hmm. It will transform America to something that you do not like and you will have voted for it. And it's going to be too late. Oh, it's too late, baby. Yeah, it's too late. And you have to wake up. You have to wake up. The radical, radical extremism coming out of the left to transform America as we know it is relentless. The world is so screwed right now because of the last four years. I don't know how that woman could possibly get elected because of what they have done in situations around the world that have never made us more vulnerable and volatile right now that the world is in than ever before. That you don't realize. Forget the question. Forget the question about you. All right. Let's just for let's just drop that for this moment. You know the question that everybody's asking that Ronald Reagan made famous. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? All right. That's the that's the economic question that everybody is answering. All right. Everybody can answer that on their own. Let's ask this question, too. Is the world a much better, 
safer, peaceful, more organized place than it was four years ago. Let's ask that situation. Because see, folks, it doesn't matter when you're dead. It doesn't matter. Ask yourself that question. The world has become a wreck under this leadership. Weak leadership, compromised leadership, stained leadership that we know and we will find out about the corruption, the money paid to the Biden family from China and Ukraine and Russia. We know all of that. The world is a complete disaster and wreck. And if you have any concern at all for your family, your grandchildren, the country you love, your life, then damn it, you should be concerned about what the hell's going on in Washington and who you're putting in there. That's why it's a wreck. Folks, we had we had a five nation peace accord with all the countries in the Middle East under Donald Trump. It was quiet. It was peaceful over there. Iran had their nuts tied behind their back. They couldn't do anything. The people of Iran were rising and about to overthrow that country and bring in their own democracy because we strangled them so much with sanctions and oil production. We had them. Nope. Not when this new one came in. We've got war in the Middle East. We hadn't lost a person in Afghanistan in 18 months. We were, women were teaching, walking the streets of Afghanistan. We had one of the most modern, up-to-date military air force bases there anywhere in the world, which was great for our peacekeeping because it was a half hour from China. They gave all that up, surrendered, killed 13 men. Russia invaded Crimea. Russia didn't do a thing under Donald Trump. All this rhetoric, all him and Putin, but Putin does not want President Trump in there. Putin loves it that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is in there. China is about to take Taiwan. We haven't done a damn thing to them. Not one thing. Trump two weeks ago said China needs to start buying more food from American farmers, number one. Kamala Harris, what, she doesn't know who the leader of China is. Our spooktacular October isn't over yet at the Roadside Event Center and the Blue Cat Bar and Grill in Huntley. Plan to be at the Roadside Event Center Monday, October 28th for Halloween trivia with Dave Austin starting at 630. And mark your calendars for December 7th for the Huntley Christmas Troll and December 23rd for classic Christmas movie trivia. There's always something happening at the Roadside Event Center and the Blue Cat Bar and Grill in Huntley, just nine miles east of the Metro Park exit. Down in South America, our border, a total disaster, folks. You want some more today? This And keep in mind, these are AP stories. AP, the one of the most liberal news organizations you can find anywhere that will spin anything to help the liberal progressive movement. Mm-hmm. And I got stories from AP today about all kinds of things that are going on. There have been so many, so many illegal immigrants that have come into the country that all of the schools are broke and they're struggling. AP headline, school struggling to support migrant students. They can't keep up. Aurora, Colorado, just Aurora, has put in 3,000 migrant children into their school systems. 36% of their school population is now made up by illegals, and they don't speak the language. And the Biden administration, you have to educate these kids. they got to find translators. All ca- It's breaking them. And so what suffers? American students. Yes. Our proficiency levels, math, level, everything. Thing. Headline. Yep, that's an AP story. AP story. They can't keep up. They can't keep up. Why? Biden, Harris, John Tester. You don't hear about these kind of things wrecked all around the world. Folks, the Congo. The Congo down in Africa is such a disaster. By in any other time of history, this would be a disaster that would need to be rectified immediately. The humanity going on down. It's unbelievable, the pain and suffering. Wars going on in the Congo. And why? Why are the wars going on in the Congo? Well, let's read this AP story. The Congo desperately wants to find stability in their, here it comes, They're mineral-rich country. They are fighting with factions and among themselves because of the minerals 
and the demand for minerals now coming from the Congo. And why? Because now of the huge demand for these minerals because of decisions by da 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 the Harris Biden administration mandating electric vehicles and the minerals needed for lithium battery production, all of that, now has these countries fighting among themselves and has led to war by the Congo government for the riches that the U.S. demands. It's amazing. It's amazing. Last year, at the Congo's request, the U.N., they drew down their peacekeeping force there to hand responsibilities over to the Congo. That's putting the kids in charge of the candy. A U.N. force that we pay for is trying to find new ways to repel these rebels. There are 600,000 people that have been displaced because of this war just in Goma alone. That's one city. Folks, they're starving. It's unbelievable. An international community warned the U.N.'s force pullout would leave a vacuum. 80% of Congo's 7 million people are displaced. Can you believe that? 80% folks That's 5.6 million people No homes, living on the street, side of the road Why? Rich minerals That, this tournament We've got to have it for our Green New Deal mandates The world, folks, is a Total disaster Under the last three and a half years And John Tester is part of the melee Yes he is He's voted for all this stuff Fighters over there seized the town of Rabaya Because it holds deposits of tantalum which is used in our electronics, Apple devices, new electric vehicles. They have 15% of all the tantalum in the world, and they're fighting and killing. Nobody has any brains to handle these kind of situations in the current administration. So besides asking the question, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Once again, ask the question, is the world better off now than it was four years ago? And if you say no, then you can't check the box for these a-holes that are all running again. But they will. I know. We all learned as a young baby, if you put your finger on the hot stove burner, it burns. So you know what we never did again? We never touched that burner again. People, I don't care. Yeah, I've endured hardship. My income's dropped. My groceries are up 20%. The power's gone through the roof because of all these green energy mandates, wind power, solar. My power bill went up. My water bill went up. I can't I can't save a nickel. My taxes have gone up. But I'm going to keep voting for them anyway. And they're going to get rid of all of the Trump tax cuts in April. Mm -hmm. And you know who will support that? Your guy, John Tester. Keep voting for him, though. That's why I'm putting cement blocks up around my place right now. (laughs) I I can't get enough of them. Around the whole perimeter. (laughs) Only one way in and one way out. And and that's covered by cameras and guns. And I'm going to have Doberman pincers there at the gate, just like on The Simpsons. It's crazy, folks. Crazy. Look at what their diversity equality inclusion program has done to America. Look at all of the companies now around America that are dropping that. Look what happened to our look what happened to our secret service mm-hmm. when they implemented that. Kim Cheadle put that in place. Why? They lost all sense of reality. They didn't have the knowledge to even look at the highest points around presidential debates to clear the roofs. But they had tons of diversity, inclusion, equity people that have all been hired. They are around there. Our own Chamber of Commerce did it in Billings. Sold an iconic painting to start one of those programs for businesses. This is the kind of crap you're getting. We lose all sense of common sense and reality in these elections. I don't want a DEI surgeon working on my brain. No. I want the most qualified. I don't care what their genitalia is. All these things that they've done, folks. Wake up. Oh, and it's going to be nasty. It's it's uh, it's going to be nasty. Another AP headline today. Ballot drop box fires. Or fires? Ha- fires now. Well, very common. Well, they're setting the drop boxes on fire. The ballots are in there. So you go by, drop a DuPont spinner in there, and there you go. Drop boxes on fire. And it's funny how the ones they're targeting, folks, are ones that are in the red areas of wherever they're happening. Isn't that... Folks, how can... 
How come you never see Republicans burning buildings down? Hmm? You don't see Republicans pulling these drop boxes off of poles in Montana and starting these fires? No. Why, conservative people? Fires in the ballot boxes in Oregon and Washington this week is a reminder of how popular collection devices have been subject to false conspiracy theories. You're such an asshole. How could that be a false conspiracy theory when they're on fire? Fact checkers. These are all UM journalists graduating fact checkers. They were taught by their professors how to do this and what side to take. Some groups want to restrict their use. There's 27 states that use these drop-off boxes and the District of Columbia that allow them. Six others don't have specific laws. Six states banned them entirely in 2020. One over the weekend in Vancouver, Washington, destroyed hundreds and hundreds of ballots that were in that box. They know which ones to burn. One in a neighborhood of Portland, Oregon. Damaged three drop boxes there. It's not a coinky dink that three drop boxes started on fire. No. Three. Incinerary devices, according to the police, started the fires in the drop boxes. Authorities said the evidence showed the fires were connected. They were able to tell three of the ballots who the voters were and they're contacting them to get replacements, but they don't know who the other ones were. So, they've decided to increase how frequently they collect the ballots from the drop boxes. Folks, is that an attack on democracy? When these little liberal nut jobs are running around lighting these drop boxes on fire? No. How do you know? Because we know what areas the drop boxes are in. Grew in popularity during 2020. And so they knew what they could do in drop boxes and they want to keep using them. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency advises state and local officials to place drop boxes in convenient high traffic areas that are familiar to voters, like a library or a community center. Hmm. Now, what parties are most likely to use a community center or a library? You know, they don't have a drop box in the gun department at Shields, do they? No. No, they sure as hell don't. But they'll have one near the social services office. Mm -hmm. The movie 2000 Mules amplified the claims exposing millions of people in a country that ballot harvesting operations goes on and they deposit fraudulent ballots in drop boxes in the dark of night. AP's fact checker said they debunked it. You know why? Where did they get their fact checker? <laughs> you mother fact checkers. I know where they get them. Yeah. Look, look who fact checked the debate in Montana. The UM School of Journalism students yeah. don't have the brains to come out of the ring. Paranoia about drop boxes continued. In Montana, oh, this, I didn't even know this was in here. In Montana, where an important U.S. Senate race is on the ballot, Republicans recently seized on a ballot box tampering incident to raise money off the doubts about the electoral process. L listen to what they write. Oh you God. guys, here's one for you guys. You don't know anything about it. They're pressing charges against that kid now. Right, right. You see how they do this? And despite all this, folks, against us, all the media against us, Q2, Color 8, all of them, all on board, all the papers, all the national media, all the pundits out there, all of this, we still have to try to win. Mm -hmm. Six states have banned drop boxes, Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, and South Dakota. They have all banned drop boxes. You know, folks, look at this crap. We never had any of this. Why do you think all of this stuff was implemented? It would not have been implemented if it would not have been advantageous for one party after another. Look at our initiative here. What is it? CI-126. Why do you think that was put on the ballot? Valid, folks, you think that will benefit conservative Montanans? No. No, it won't, because it will pit the two leading vote conservatives in Montana against each other and open up the opportunity for a UM journalism legislator to win. Yeah. No on all those two. And once again, the door is wide open here for you folks to come in and argue these points. Nobody's ever going to come in. They're never going to put themselves in a position where they can be proven Wrong. You're uh, you're college educated. You're smarter. You've been in the business. This and that. Uh, you've run in numerous elections. You can talk circles around these two doofuses mm -hmm. on the air. Nope. And argue your point. You've gone to law school, all of these kind of things. Anytime. Give you exposure to the largest audience anywhere in the state, in fact, in this region of the country. And you won't. And, of course, we, we would like it.
it to be races or candidates of significance, not uh, not one certain legislator running from a House district at Reed Point or something. You know, it has to be something where the the, the majority of the people would want to know. The greater good, yes. Right, that kind of thing. But, I mean, because you just can't do all of that. The dog catcher, Ekalaka, we can't have them two people in. Um, wake up. And it's funny, you know, we talk about this on the day the stock market crashed, October 29th, mm-hmm. because none of us here, hardly any of us, ever went through that. We don't know what it could be like. Right. We just all assume never, never, it'll never, it'll never, it'll never, it'll never, and it might. It could. None of us have ever thought, oh, we're not going to have a nuclear war. It's never going to, ne- you folks, we have to make sure it doesn't. I never lived through a depression. We never had to eat the zoo animals to live in big. We're heading for bankruptcy. So we don't think it could happen. It'll never happen. This could never happen. We'll never be overrun by foreigners. Uh, they'll, they'll never have an effect on our economy, the open borders. 15,000 murderers released, 13,000 sexual predators released into our streets, folks. Thousands of people with terrorist ties, people from China. Oh, it'll never happen. We thought that about 9-11, didn't we, Wilson? Yes, we did. That would never happen. That'll never happen. Folks, wake up. The changing of America could happen. It could. You can stop it. You have to decide which one you like. That's what's great about our country. You can decide which one you like. I know which one I like. You got to pick which one you like. And you got uh, one week from today to make your decision. If you haven't already, mm-hmm. put your ballot in a drop box or drop it off down at the courthouse. That's the way. That's the good one. If you're voting absentee, drop, go down there, hand it in. Put. They've got people outside there watching. They empty them. I like that idea. And next Tuesday, polls open at 7 and they close at 8. So, Perry, if you're listening, don't show up at 8.05 and want to vote. Just like yesterday. <laughs> Don't show up at five minutes past one. Otherwise, you won't get in. That's right. And the Yankees lost last night again, so I'm having a good day. Mm-hmm. They're about toast, I think. So I kind of felt bad for the coach, Aaron Boone, in the press conference last night. You know, only one team's ever come back from being down 3-0. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Thank God, it looks good, Jill. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> good question. Okay. First news coming up, 6-14. The Breakfast Flakes podcast brought to you by the Blue Cat Bar and Grill. Next to the roadside event center in Huntley, the Blue Cat, it's where it's at.